Good evening, this is Apostle Brian from Global Healing Ministries, and it's time for Dig Deep Bible Study. I'd like to welcome our YouTube, YouTube audience as well as our Facebook audience. Uh, we can be found live on both places, but tonight we're only live on Facebook for Bible study. In the coming months, I hope to make that a different story. However, we're here tonight and we're getting ready to talk about uh, the last of the evil spirits specifically mentioned in the Bible. And the last spirit is the seducing spirit. But I, wanna, I want you all to understand something. The Bible teaches us about strong men. And what it says to us in, in, in uh, Matthew 12 and 29 is, is how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man? What that indicates to me is, is that even though demons have strength, we as people are strong men ourselves. And I'm not trying to be gender specific by using the, the term man, because man, woman, anybody that has the power of the Holy Spirit operating on the inside of them is strong. Let's pray with that thought in mind. Spirit of the living God, help us all to be strong men, Lord God. Not just strong men for a moment, but strong men that would, that possess the power, that are that had the power of the Holy Spirit working on the inside. Lord, we thank you right now, and we pray that the words of my mouth represent the meditations of thine heart. In Jesus' holy and matchless name we pray, amen. The strong man. <laughs> You got to get a the, the the demon has to break you down in order to do the work that he came to do. Now, I, now we've been talking about all of the thirteen evil spirits mentioned by name in the Bible, and there are there are those who will tell you there are seventeen, uh, fifteen evil spirits because we tied a couple of them together. But it doesn't matter; we still covered them all. Okay, so the the first one we covered was the spirit of bondage. Okay, found in Romans eight and fifteen, and then we talked about the spirit of fear, found in First Timothy one and seven. Then we spoke of the deaf and dumb spirit. And every time I talk to you about this spirit, I I, I have to remind you that the Bible that the Jesus said this will come not out but by prayer and fasting. Okay, and and that's the deaf and dumb spirit. Mark nine and twenty five. Uh, it doesn't mean, uh, I've said that on several occasions, it doesn't mean that you have to be at a place where you are praying and fasting in order to defeat this particular demon. It just means that you have to be someone that has prayer and fasting as a part of your life. I want you to get that understanding. A part of your life must be prayer and fasting and study so you can defeat this demon. Then we talked about the spirit of heaviness. Uh, that is in Isaiah 61 and three. We talked about the spirit of infirmity, Luke 13 and 11. Remember I told you that this spirit is one that basically it, uh, is different, operates a little differently than all of the other spirits because all of the other spirits operate by trying to influence you. And it's, if you can be influenced by a demon that would walk up to you and say, hey, I need you to catch pancreatic cancer so that you can die, uh, then you're a little different to me because I, I'm just not going to, they can't, they can't influence me to do that. I don't care what's going on. All right. And so, and then we have the spirit of jealousy, which is found in Numbers 5 and 14. Uh, and, and that demon is the one that's wreaking havoc across this world right now. That demon is wreaking havoc because the spirit of jelly, jealousy, <laughs> I said jelly, uh, also controls the murder demon. Okay. And there's a lot of crazy type of murders going on in this world. The spirit of divination and sp familiar spirits found in Acts 16 and 16 and second Kings 21 and six, uh, we have also the perverse spirit, spirit rather, found in Isaiah 19 and 14, the spirit of whoredom, uh, which is in Hosea 4 and 12. Now, if you had ever 
read Hosea, you understand that this particular spirit is not all just about sex. Because if you know anything about his wife, she uh, really had a thing about money. Okay, Hosea's, Hosea's wife was not just a prostitute, but she was one of those people who was a lover of nice things. Okay, and then you have the spirit of haughtiness, which can be found in Proverbs 16 and 18. Uh, the lying spirit, 1 Kings 22 and 22. And the Antichrist, which is in 1 John 4 and 3. And we come, this brings us to the last one that is specifically mentioned by name in the Bible. And that is the seducing spirit. And it comes out of 1 Timothy 4 and 1. And here's what 1 Timothy 4 and 1 says. It says, now the spirit speaketh expressly, this is the Holy Spirit, that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And seducing spirits are, are, are hypocrite. Hippoc uh, Hypocritical lies, hypocrisy, just people that just lie, lie, lie all the time. Uh, they, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 12 and 22 that lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Listen, I don't care what you're doing. It's never a good idea to lie. Because when you lie, you have to remember the first lie to, that connects to the second lie and the third lie. It's better to just tell the truth so you don't have to remember the lie because it's easier to remember the truth. Uh, they got a little thing when I was in the military. They, they, they taught them how to interrogate. And it, it's something about how people lie. Uh, and I think they said you look up and to the left or down and to the right, something crazy like that. But they knew that when you did that, if you were being interrogated, that you were lying. And, and there are people who know that. And so it's not a good idea to lie. And they have hypocritical lies. And lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. I mean, when God speaks, you know, God, that's a very strong word to say it's an abomination, that God has a problem with you lying. Uh, just don't do it. Uh, that, you know, you'll see people like that. And people that you know that are hypocritical lies, they have been uh, put together, a, a, a seducing spirit is controlling them through uh, lines through through a, a hypocritical spirit, amen. And then there's there's deception that comes along with seducing spirits. Uh, the Bible says in Romans seven and eleven, it says, seven, chapter seven verse eleven, it says, for sin taking occasion by the commanded deceived me, and by it slew me. In other words, there are times that that, that you're going to be in situations where somebody's going to seduce you into doing something that's contrary to the will of God. It can't happen because we are not always up on the up with our defenses. But here's the thing. You need to recover. Just stand back up, repent, and, and ask for forgiveness and, and start doing the right thing. But the way to keep this thing from happening to you, happening to you is to uh, uh, know the word, okay? Uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 13 says, but evil men and seducers shall wax, wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That was crazy to me when I read it. I said, because not only are the, the deceivers, the people with deception coming your way, not only will they be ones trying to deceive you, there'll be people that they'll be fall, be deceived by who are just are of the same spirit thereof. So you need to be aware of that, okay? Second Thessalonians 2 and, says, 2 and 10 says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Listen, the problem with these people is that they don't want to know the truth. It don't matter what you say to them, the spirit has them controlled, and you first have to deal with the demon that's causing them to not want to hear the truth, okay? 1 John 2, 18, and 8, 18 through 28. I'm going to read a little bit because it's something that you need to understand. It says, little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now, even now are there many Antichrists. I told you uh, last week that they were already here, okay? They're here, they're here, they're here, okay? Whereby we know that it is the last time. Time. They went out from us. Listen at this. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Some people, you just got to let go. And that's hard, especially for me as a pastor. 
because my God is to present the word so that people might receive it. But there are some people that just don't want to hear nothing I got to say, and I got to let them go. I'll always be available to them if they come to me, but if they leave, I'll let them go, okay? I, 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 I got to let them go because there are too many people who want God, who need the help that I can provide, that want to receive the Lord in their heart, that you don't have time to, to, to continuously be dogmatic in your chasing of those that have expressly shown to you, I don't want nothing to do with God. I don't need God. It's all right. We good. I don't need God. You don't have to do that, okay? So don't chase what you don't have to chase, okay? And it says, uh, it goes on to say, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. People that's trying to lie to you are not of the truth, okay? It's that simple, all right? Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Listen. If you don't believe, uh, you cannot believe that Jesus is the Christ and sit up and lie continuously and try to seduce people into moving away from God. If your every thought is to try to get them to do something that's contrary to the will of the Lord, uh, that's their every thought in talking to you, then they're not, they don't, they, they, they're liars. They don't believe in Jesus, okay? And, and this is the promise that ye have, verse 25, the promise that ye have promised us even eternal life. You're not getting eternal life from somebody that's seducing you away from God. And this is actually speaking to the Antichrist. The Antichrist is those that bring to you other religions. Uh, somebody put on Facebook talking about uh, how difficult, I think I said this last week, how difficult is it, for, uh, is it to tell a person who believes in God that they've been fed a lie? Well, here's my problem with that whole analogy. These people that believe that our ancestors uh, back in the day, uh, that, that, that they got the stories from somewhere else to create the Bible, the people that believe uh, the Muslims, the, 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 the Latter-day Saints, all of these people who don't believe that Jesus Christ lived and died for us and has promised our eternal life, they're seducers. They're seducing spirits. And I'm of the opinion that the last thing I need to know is that you're telling me Jesus is not real. Well, give me, they can't even give you an alternative that provides no punishment, that provides uh, an alternate life that will give you no punishment. Because Jesus got consequences when you don't believe in him. The rest of these people, I ain't heard nothing about no consequences. And when I said that, the person never came back and said a thing, Okay. And so Paul goes on to say, John goes on to say, these things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you, concerning them that seduce you, okay? Uh, but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things. And it is truth, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when ye shall appear, when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. That's the goal. I hear a lot of people, you know, there are, there are, there are things that where they talk about the coming, the second coming of Christ, and people want to talk about when he get here, and uh, I, want to, I want to show you the signs. These are signs. Don't get me wrong. There are signs. Uh, and, and I can show them to you in the book of Revelations. I'm actually showing you one now. This seducing spirit is something that the, at the very beginning of this past scripture, we talked about it in time, the last day. It's in the last days that these seducing spirits and people will fall away from the church. But here's the deal. Uh, if you are, as verse 28 says, okay, that you abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. I, I, I want to be able to just bow down and say, okay, I'm good. Take me. I want to be in part of that number that if Jesus Christ was to come today, I would, I, I want to have that assurance in my mind that I have shown him through my faith in him, through my love for him, through his guidance for me, that I will be on my way to heaven when he come, okay? But you can't pay attention to these uh, hypocrite, these people that are trying to deceive you with deception. 
You can't have a seared conscience. Uh, again, uh, it's, it was spoken of in um, 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speak up expressly that in the latter times, see all of this stuff is talking about latter times. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You're only going to listen to those type of spirits if you have a seared conscience that will allow you to believe other things, okay? Allow you to be confused, allow you to be lied to, allow you to be led astray. The Bible says in James 1 and 14, but every man is tempted. Yes, you will be tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Ah, ah, and enticed. Own lust and enticed. Listen, you bring the desire the devil just entices you to go to it. So you have to put yourself in a mind frame that I want to know what thus saith the Lord so that I don't get enticed to lead myself astray when I am tempted, okay? Wandering from the truth. Deuteronomy 13, 6 and 8 says this. Deuteronomy 13, 6 and 8 says this. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. Well, now, I've known some other gods, and I know that some of you have lived a life that you've had an opportunity to know some other gods also. Okay? I think I heard Noel Jones say once they told him that when he got that, 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 that when he was out in the world, just go all out, do everything you think you want to do because, and, and then come to God. What they didn't tell him, and he said this, is that those demons that were seduced, that you were following in the world would not let him go. And they won't let you go either. But you have a power of the Holy Spirit working on the inside that will give you the strength to rebuke them because you have the right to take what is written in the word in Matthew 12 and 12 and say, and bind that demon up as it approaches you uh, and God will bind it for you in heaven and loose the Holy Spirit in your life and God will loose it for you in this world. Amen. Okay. And it says, namely gods of other people. So don't be reading about these other gods. Don't be reading all that stuff, putting all that filth in your mind. Be careful what you take in. You know, these, these horror movies. These are demons that, that get these people to write these horror movies. That's not, that's not what you should be looking at. You got to be careful what you listen to. Okay? What you watch. All of that kind of stuff. Okay? Thou shalt not, cons shall not consent unto him or hearken unto him. Neither shall... Thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal, conceal him. Okay? The gods of other people which are round about you. I'm going back to verse 7. Nigh unto thee or far off from thee, from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. I don't care how far they are, how close they are. Don't have nothing to do with them. Okay? This is what the Bible's teaching us. Seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It, it again tells you that same thing uh, in regards to wandering from the truth. Seducers, enticers, seared conscience, all of these things come back. I, I read for you 1 Timothy 4 and 1. I read for you 2 Timothy 2 and 13. But Proverbs 1 and 10 talks about it even again. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Okay? I remember when I first got the Lord on my side and I first started pursuing after the Lord, I knew a guy that told me, he said, man, I couldn't, I wish I could go party with you in the club because I know you was something. I was like, yeah, I probably was, but I ain't going. Okay. And, and at one point, uh, I was trying to, to take profanity out my out of my life and I was really, I was doing a really good job and I'm sitting in this dude's office and I cussed. And not his office, in his room. And I cussed because he was other, you know, I was otherwise trying to be a good example. And I cussed and I was like, mm, I apologize, man, we ain't tripping. I was like, yeah, but I am in my mind. That's what I said. And at that moment, I knew I couldn't keep going to his room with the frequency that I had been going to him. Because in, in some instances, people in their evil are stronger than you are in your good. And if you find out that you get around somebody that will take you to an evil place, you need to stop being around them. 
If they can seduce you into doing something, you need to stop being around you. Because we can be fascinated, uh, have a fascination with evil ways, objects, or persons. I know Christians who say they, they like horror movies or they like... Uh, 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 I remember somebody told me they was crazy about... Um, what's the little... The, 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 I can't think of his name. That little sorcerer boy with the glasses and whatever he was. I can't think of a name. Maybe you know who I'm talking about. I can't get it out right now. But they were fascinated. J.K. somebody. Rollins, Rollins wrote the book. They were fascinated with those books and those movies. And, and, and I was like, another friend of mine, he would take the movies and hide them. In, in, in the books, he would hide them. In the bookstore, in the BX, because he didn't want people buying them. Because of what they represented. They represented witches. They represented evil ways. They represented, they had objects or persons and all of those types of things. And you have to be careful when you allow those things in your life. A friend of mine uh, called me today and told me that somebody, uh, he, 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 he's got a church and he needs some better lighting in his sanctuary. And, and he said to me, uh, I said, man, when he was getting ready to do something to, to extend the platform in the church. And he said, man, I said, when are you going to do something about that lighting? He says, matter of fact, I got some. And he told me where he got it from. And, and, and all I'm going to say is, is that the person that gave it, gave him the lighting, practiced witchcraft. And what I told him, I said, you ain't took that stuff in your church yet. And he said, no. I said, good. I said, because you need to go in the church, get some anointing oil, anoint all of that stuff, and pray those demons off of it. See, people think that demons only attach themselves to people. But sometimes they hide up in your closet, in your house, in the attic. Sometimes and they attach themselves to inanimate objects that you don't think that you think are harmless. But the witch gave it to him and he was getting ready to take him into his into his church. But he needed to pray those demons up off of him. Because then they get into the church and don't think demons don't want to come to church. They want to come. And they will come. Sometimes they come in with other people. But when you know that they're coming in with other people, you're prepared to deal with them. But when you when they come in with something like a light stand, you ain't thinking nothing about that. And people give you stuff. That's why the Bible says, let no man lay hands on you suddenly. You ain't supposed to receive everything from everybody. Now, if you was like me back in the day, I used to play dominoes. And we would they would sit up there and everybody would say, all money ain't good money. And they would not play a particular bone that you knew that they had that could have produced great points, but they wouldn't play that domino. They would play something else because that particular domino represented the ability for everybody, for somebody to take the domino for them, from them. It was like when you played domino, Big Six went out first. And when you got the domino, the last thing you wanted to do was put Big Six out there as the spinner from the jump because it would cause you to, to, to possibly lose the domino. And the whole objective was to be, la to be the only one standing without any dominoes to get everybody's points. You got to realize every f all things that people can give you are not good things for you to receive. Okay? This is, this is per prominent because some of those things are designed to seduce you away from the Lord. Roots are the work of the flesh. The roots are the work of the flesh. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, uh, and I'm going all the way down to 21, adultery, fornication, for, not fornication, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strikes, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, dark, drunkenness, revelings and such like of which I tell you for as I, I have also told you in the past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You got to watch these things in your life because if you did them in times past, trust me, you will be tempted of them. I know somebody who told me that they had a, a crack problem and they haven't smoked crack in years. Over, over 40 years. I know for a fact they haven't smoked it in over 40 years. OK. And within that time, they told me they said this oftentimes that I have dreams of smoking crack. I haven't smoked cigarettes since 2003. And every now and then I get I get attacked by the enemy to give me to get me to smoke a cigarette. And I'd be like, silly Satan, I ain't smoking no cigarette. That's just stupid. OK, same thing with alcohol for me. It's not an enticer for me. OK, but you have to know what it is that can pull you away. 
And let me tell you something about all of these types of people that I have mentioned in every last one of these 13 spirits and the fruits thereof. Matthew 7 and 20 tells you how you're going to know them. You will, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. You're going to know somebody who is, uh, who, who's always cheating on their wife, that they are an adulterer and that the spirit of whoredom works in their life. You're going to know these things because of their spirit. All right. And it is the spirit that you will know. This world, listen, everything that happens to you is not uh, done by the devil. Okay, now I'm a, I'm a, I just want to be clear about that. Everything that you go through, every bad thing that happens to you is not of the devil. Uh, sometimes it's just your bad choice. The devil didn't have nothing to do with it. It's just your bad choice that you made. But everything in this world has to do with spiritual warfare. Everything in this world has to do with it. And you have to be aware of that and be alert that the spirit Man is always under attack. So even if you are strong enough, you have gotten enough from this teaching to understand that I need and want to know more and you're studying and you're continuously looking at it and you're doing everything you can to know what you need to know about it and you see them when they approach. You've even had some of them that you've prayed out of your own spirit, okay? Here's what I need you to know. They coming back. They're coming back, okay? The Bible completely teaches us that. I can't think of the scripture right now, so, so I'm going to paraphrase it. But it says that uh, this demon, he walks around uh, looking for something to do. And when he can't find anywhere to go, he says, I'll go back home. I'll go back home. And check. And home means going back to you because he had a place in you. And he opens the door and he finds it cleaned and swept. And he invites seven more demons in. And that person is worse off than before. So I need you to understand that when you, if you are aware of someone in your, in your family, in your household that has this demon and you have the authority because you have the power of the Holy Spirit operating in you and you pray that demon up off that person, you need to not only pray the demon up off of them, you need to loose the Holy Spirit in their life. You need to loose discernment in their life so that they will see that demon approaching and that the Holy Spirit can speak to them and protect them. You need to loose God's angels in their lives so that they can be protected. That's that's just what's happening, all right? So listen, we're coming to the end. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back over the list, and, and I got a surprise for you at the end. Spirit of bondage, Romans 8 and 15. The fruit is anguish, bitterness, captivity, oppression, addictions, lust, spiritual blindness, and spiritually bruised. Those spiritually bruised people are people that tell you they got hurt by the church. They didn't get hurt by the church. It was a spirit, that, a demon that bruised them. Church didn't hurt nobody. Okay. Spirit of fear, fear, fright, found in 1 Timothy 1 and 7. Fear, fright, torment, horror, dread, nightmares, timidity, anxiety, worry, inferiority, inadequacy, tension, phobias, faithlessness, terror, and apprehension. Fear is the number one demon that people have. It drives them to every other demon that 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 uh, under every other spirit that they have. Fear, okay. Deaf and dumb spirit, dumbness, uh, suicidal tendencies, madness, insanity, uh, senility, deafness, convulsions, and seizures. All right. Spirit of heaviness, found in Isaiah sixty-one and three. Mourning, grief, despair hopelessness, loneliness, discouragement, rejection, self-pity, gloom, sorrow, and sadness, okay? Spirit of infirmity, Luke 13 and 11, sickness, frailty, maladies, uh, infections, fevers, viral infections, bacterial infections, uh, ailments, and illness. Spirit of jealousy, Numbers 5 and 14, jealousy, murder, anger, rage, wrath, revenge, spite, Suspicions, competition, hatred, cruelty, coveting, and selflessness, selfishness. Uh, spirit of divination and familiar, and familiar spirits. 
found in Acts 16 and 16 and 2 Kings 21 and 6. Mediums, conjurers, astrologers, 32 million women. In a study that was brought up in 1984, 32 million women believe in astrology. That is how they should pick a mate. And it's even more than that of believing it in the world. That is not of God. The Bible, the, the Lord tells you how to pick up. A, a, a woman ain't got no trying to pick a man. A man should pick a woman. Proverbs, okay? Uh, Deviners, witches, hypnotists, and mimicry. All of these things are of that spirit. Perverse spirit, which can be found in Isaiah 19 and 14. Error, foolishness, fretting, self-lovers, sexual perversions, lewdness, false teachers, perversions, and rebellion. All of these are in that found in a perverse spirit, the spirit of perversion. These are the fruit. Spirit of whoredom, Hosea 4 and 12, adultery, idolatry. That's that thing, that love of something other than God. Lovers of the world, lovers of positions, power, okay? Uh, seduction, sexual seduction, all right? Spirit of haughtiness, per, uh, per, Proverbs 16 and 18, pride scornful, mockers, braggarts, stubbornness, self-righteousness, domineering, egotistic, contention and vanity, lying spirit, 1 Kings 22 and 22, lies, flattery, imaginations, exaggerations, strong delusions, vain babbling, a profanity, old wise tales, superstitions, antichrist spirit, 1 John 4 and 3, seeks to irritate, against Christ, vexes by deception, disturbs gathering, seeks to rule and afflicts. Mm. Seducing spirit, first Tim, Timothy four and three, separation, craftiness, hypocrisy, apathy, uh, what I tell you, uh, uh, seducers, enticers, seared conscience, this is how you know them, wonders of truth, uh, deception, Hypocritical liars, hypocrisy. Listen, here's the surprise. I told you that, and, I, and I'm, I'm still firm, in that there are only the ones that I told you that are mentioned are 13. That's the ones that are mentioned. But the Bible, next week, we're going to talk about death. And death needs a special mention as it concerns spiritual warfare. Because Jesus spoke a word to Lazarus that brought him out of a tomb. And he tells us in John that because he goes to the Father, greater works than I, that I do shall ye do because I go unto the Father that the Father might get the glory, would get the glory in heaven. Listen, we have the power to speak over death. We have the power to speak over a lot of things. So we're going to talk about death next week as it concerns a battle with the spirit. Amen. So listen, this has been Bible. Okay. Somebody told me it was Matthew 12 and 42. <laughs> I know why they told me to, because I gave it to them. I'm going to read what I was talking to you about in Matthew 12, uh, before we go and, 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 and expound on it a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, LaVonda, uh, 12, uh, 42 through 45. Here's what the Bible says. It says, the queen of the South shall rise up in judgment with this generation, the queen of the South, and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he shall, uh, I should have just read 43. He walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. And then goeth he and taketh himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So he's already bad. He's bringing somebody worse. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. You cannot just clean somebody up. You cannot just pray for healing on somebody and watch them get healed and not 
loose the power of the Holy Spirit and loose the the spirit the power of the, the spirit of discernment on them so that they can be protected from that spirit that you got out of them coming back. That demon that you got out of them coming back. Listen, we're going to talk about death next week. I'm excited to have that conversation with you next week. I'm excited. Uh, my five minutes this week is going to be, I, I think we've talked about it before, but I want to talk about it again. Uh, and it's going to be commitment. And I want you to think on this thing. A lot of people like to say, I'm not there yet. Mm. And I'm going to leave you right there. I'm not there yet as it concerns commitment. See you on Saturday with the five minutes. See you on Sunday morning with another worship service from Global Healing uh, Ministries. Love you guys. Thanks for being with me. God bless you and good night.